Come on. Jumpy jump. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Well, let's go to the meeting room. When Stanley go to the office and see what happens there. Two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single Don't person get fired. There either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Business strategy. Shoot pandas in the face. That's what I'm talking about. The most expensive boss. Got it. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? Hmm. In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, this is what he was going to do instead. <laughs> Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, eight. since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Got the 8 achievement. Fine. Two. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I don't believe you. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yep. Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. It reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. <laughs> Stanley can't see the bigger picture. 
He doesn't know the real Good job. story. Trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Fair boy, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. Uh -huh. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Uh -huh. But... And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was Ooh. already dead from the moment he hit start? Corridor. The pacing of this corridor section was important. To get right, the corridor has been moved and altered to make sure that the player reaches two doors at a good time. The two doors. A set of two doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerges an extension of it. An exploration of a contradiction this room posed. Brilliant. the office button sounds ooh credits floor cab filing cabinets let's see what these other things say office layout Boop. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game, the path of Stanley's office with two doors, the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Hmm. Office computers. Ooh, can I turn off the other one? Or on, maybe? No. Left or right? Left or right? Oh, they're back on? Let's try right. Office clock. Narration outtakes. Roughly three separate times over two years of development, there are clips from early outtakes that were not used in the final game. But I want to listen to them. Boo! Didn't even notice the thing that said escape. Mm, up. This is a nice museum. Freedom ending. In the game's alpha. Hmm. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down with the freedom above with the freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down and placed the endings together instead. Ooh. Game design mock up this level level that is William. The level designer sent Davy the writer as kind of an audition piece. The strength is what got William hired to design the full game. Hmm. A 
Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. They don't look very different. I mean, I see small iterative changes, but... Eh. The office. This looks good. This looks good. Oh god, can't read it. Oh no, they change. Okay. Narrator emails. After the second trailer was sent out, we asked people to email the narrator questions. Here's a selection of those emails. Well, hmm. More endings, fewer endings, more narrators, fewer narrators, more Stanley, less Stanley. The point of the HD remix is to win. Or to lose. Larger. Words. This is text. Words, words. We submitted the Stanley parable to follow the green light process. Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. It's far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. You mean, you know, Half-Life 1? When the game stops being fun? When the, uh, the humans show up? Hmm... Is there anything else to do? This might be the end of it. Oh, here's something. Zending model. The zending went through many iterations. I have not seen this yet. The game is now paused. An ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Maybe that's my only way out of here. Hmm. Oh, there's the exit. Okay. Meeting room vent. Ooh. Okay. Um obey maintenance. Two doorways to maintenance, one option. Ooh, a vent. Really? Flow hallways was following the first two doors was important to get right since players would replay them so many times. Ultimately, the simplest version won out. I have to play Stanley Parable all day on a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, so guess what we're doing? Playing Stanley Parable. Trying to get these wonderful endings here. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Sure. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. 
You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose.